e-commerce website header navigation navbar we have our e-commerce website title of flex watch along with search bar with our search button and hover effects menu or nav links open upon clicking the menu icon with animation displaying links to each section in the website once clicked on the menu link or outside of it, the menu closes. On clicking the link it takes us to the respective section, and then closes the menu links. It's responsive on all screen sizes, and it's also unique in its header, in navigation layout, and structure. You won't see such navbar most times. To make sure our navbar is working I have created the sections, and written their titles. Let's start our local host in VS Code. By the way, if you do want to see more cute web development content then you need to subscribe to my channel and turn on a notification bell. I can't believe I said that so cheesily. Anyways, the header contains a logo, search bar, favorite button, cart button, and a hexagonal navbar. Logo has a link representing the brand Flex Watch. We will use subheading text default for this. Search bar is inside a container with an input field and a search button. The button will have same styles as we made in the button defaults in the previous video. If you want to check it out then link is in the description. This head container won't be displaying the search bar on small screens of mobile in the header. Before I forget to mention, we are using font awesome icons in this website. We have all our icons in the aquatic style button. We also have a useless heart icon inside the head container. Do you guys want to see the row class in the header to center everything? Wait, why did my dumb self put heart icon in the search container? It's search icon guys, I apologize for my mistake. Anyways, back to the useless heart icon that we have. I am thinking later we might make it useful in the future, but it will be not part of this specific e-commerce watch website project. Now, outside of the head container within header, we have cart button and navigation menu links. In short, we are finally going to write navbar after a century of this HTML. This cart button container displays the cart icon in a quantity span. We will add functionality to this cart when we get to the bestseller section. For now, it's just an eye candy with the job of looking pretty. Make sure to make the span zero so when we add add to cart functionality, it increases span number according to the number of products in cart. Finally, it's time for a hexagonal navbar with a toggle button that collapses or expands a list of navigation items with an animation, of course. I will be honest that I have never seen any navbar like this similar to what I showed you guys in the demo. It's just a unique to pass on and not create. But if something like this is common then do let me know in the comments. The navbar uses a list of links like home, about, etc. that expands vertically when toggled. These links point to different sections of the web page. List is hidden by default and shown when toggled. Make sure to write the section ID same as the href link in the anchor tag. By the way, next video will be all about home section in this playlist where we will create our manual hero section slider for watches. After this navbar we will add an overlay. A full screen overlay will appear behind the navigation when the navbar is open. Let me just set the button font size 0.9 rem. They look a little bigger here. I was gonna write the main section CSS when we get to the sections, but let's have it now to test the nav links properly. Anyways, the main element is pushed down by 100 viewport height and uses overflow x hidden to prevent horizontal scrolling. With a minimum height of 100% and width of 100 viewport width to fill the viewport while also centering it. Meanwhile, the section element has a minimum height of 100 vh, each, some padding for internal spacing, and also prevents horizontal scrolling with overflow x hidden. Time to style our header now. The header is positioned fixed at the top and stretches the full width of the viewport. It has a gradient background and a box shadow for a shadow effect. It fixes the header at the top of the page, ensuring it spans the full width with the gradient background and shadow for depth, while a high Z index keeps it above other elements. It's hard to write these colors from the other screen for the video. I definitely need to see an eye doctor. We all coding nerds should get our eyesight checked from time to time. It's important to take care of ourselves. 
Anyways, in most cases the box shadow should be light or simple not too dark or too white to scare people away, it's just how professional websites should look like. Now for the header container that centers the content within the header, with padding for spacing and a maximum width to maintain a clean layout. Basically just establishing the rules so it's easy to make things responsive. Also our logo is centered while our head is supposed to be display none on the small screen. We will make this head container visible in large screen when we get to media queries. Search container creates a flexible layout for the search bar, aligning items in the center with a rounded background and shadow effect for a modern look. We also have a linear gradient in search container for fashion purposes. Our theme is dark green so our linear gradients are all going to be different shades of dark green throughout the website. Our theme used to be dark pink and purple, but that didn't sit right, so here we are with this unique dark green color. This entire search container may not have any functionality, but we can create some autocomplete search or some other function to it using JavaScript, but that's gonna be another time. This search container input styles the input field to take up available space, with padding, border radius, and transition effects for a smooth focus and hover state. I am not sure if the gradient input field should be a thing, but according to our theme simple colors don't look much good, so we need gradients for everything. The input field has smooth transitions when hovered or focused. We are going to change the background color when hovered or focused. In the initial demo we didn't have a hover effect, but I decided to add the hover effect along with the focus effect. A little bit of ease in life doesn't hurt, so why not an input transition? Now onto the search button itself. This class applies transition effects for a smooth background change and shadow on hover, enhancing the button's interactivity. We already have our button set so guys can skip this part if you want. Same goes for hover effect you can skip it if you want. I am writing search button and its hover effect for no reason. So far everything looks nice so let's go for cart button that actually is supposed to have add, update and delete functionality. Cart BTN element positions the cart button relative to other elements, allowing for specific placement within the header. Whereas cart icon span styles the notification bubble over the cart icon, giving it a circular shape and background color for visibility. This cart button will have functionality related with the product cards in bestseller section, so we will add functionality on it using JavaScript when we get to the bestseller section. For now we just make it look pretty and good inside the header. That's not the span background color we have in the demo, and even though it looks good here, we still need to go for the demo one. We also need to make the span smaller in width and height and then see how it looks. Now that we are done, let's head on to the navbar. Hex navbar sets up a flex container for a hexagonal navbar, allowing for a stacked layout and a very high Z index to ensure visibility. Hex navbar UL styles the list of navigation items, positioning it absolutely and applying transitions to manage its visibility. I don't just code perfectly, errors are part of the process. Unlike other videos, I won't hide them. You'll see me fixing the issue later, but here's a tip in UL, that the top should be 14 rem not 14 pixels. See how smoothly I tried to get away with the error. It's sad how I noticed the error while adding voiceovers after the video is already recorded. Head is supposed to be display none, but I might get it to display block in order to see what we are coding. The UL show class makes the UL visible and enables interaction by setting pointer events auto. Hex navbar li elements are positioned absolutely, sizes them to 100 pixels and to 50 pixels, centers them vertically, and applies a smooth 0.5 seconds transition to the transform property for upward movement. Important thing to note here is the top which will be different for each li child based on calculations. Each nth child selector adds a slight delay to the transition, ranging from 0.1 second for the first item to 0.6 seconds for the sixth. This creates a staggered appearance when the items animate into view. Same goes for top property, because we want to vertically place each of the links one below the other and transition them one after another to make links look dope coming down to their position. Copy paste this nth child thing five times and then we will change top and transition delay values. 
I am basically increasing the transition delay 0.1 second and first value in calc 0.7 rem. While we are changing values, hit that subscribe button accidentally and slip your thumb on the like button. I won't tell anyone. Anyways, let's go towards our anchor tag to handle links inside LI. The hex navbar styles the links as block elements with a rotated design, a semi-transparent background, and double borders, along with a box shadow and a blurred backdrop filter effect. The link's background color transitions smoothly to primary light when hovered, creating an interactive and visually appealing effect. I hope you guys noticed the 10 pixels of blur value in root variables that we used in backdrop filter for anchor tag elements. Our border radius is only 6 pixels, but you guys can increase it if you want. 6 pixels are quite small curve on the corners of the element. And at last but not least, we are easing into our transitions. For hover we are changing background color to highlight our anchor link using primary light color from our variables in root. Now for those hexagonal shapes behind the links, we will create our before and after pseudo class. The li before and li after pseudo elements create the hexagons top and bottom triangles using borders. The before triangle will be rotated minus 30 degrees and the after triangle will be rotated 30 degrees to complete the hexagonal shape. These triangles use a transparent border for the sides and a solid color for the top and bottom, giving the appearance of a hexagon. I made them as hexagonal as I could with my capabilities. If you want to check out this very navbar without dealing with the rest of my video then click the link above or link in the description for it. Nav toggle class makes the navigation toggle button clickable with the high Z index for accessibility. For focus, we will have no outline obviously. The overlay class creates a full screen overlay with a dark semi-transparent background that initially has an opacity of 0 and a scaled down size of 80%. It uses smooth transitions for both opacity and scale, making it appear to grow and fade in when activated. This overlay is supposed to only appear when the nav links are open and go away when nav links are closed with some transition effect, hence we have opacity to deal with. We will switch between overlay open and close transition using JavaScript that will toggle show that class we will create now. When the show class is added, the opacity becomes 1, allowing interaction, and the overlay scales back to its full size for a smooth visual effect. After this, let's go media queries. Time to make everything here responsive for all screen sizes. Starting with head container with useless search bar and heart icon whose current style is display none. For screens above 650 pixels, we want to add display flex on the head container class in order to display it along with some gap between elements. Now we can see what I was talking about in the web page. Time to handle the LI elements in the large screen size, because for each LI element we have a different top value and when on large screen such top value can ruin the layout. Let's come on to the screen size above 1024 pixels. I already tested it on screen sizes below 1024 pixels and LI elements seems to be fine, but here we will have to change the top values a bit. Notice that we are also changing the top value of unordered list so the top of li elements will be according to the new ul elements top value. Long story short, we are simply going to increase the top value on rem in each of the li element except the first one. After we are done with javascript, we will see if all the top values are good looking or not in the finalization. If not we might tweak it a bit. We don't like to have perfection, we need to accept the bugs and learn how to fix it, so we will do just that throughout this playlist. Test the code, experiment with the code and then finalize the code. Something's off on mobile, so let's set all opacity to zero and handle it with JavaScript. Alright, so let's start JavaScript by calling the elements we will need to add functionality to our navigation navbar. We will be selecting the navigation menu list, the full screen overlay, the icon in the navbar toggle button and all the LI elements within the UL menu items. 
After acquiring these elements, all we need to do is add and remove classes or elements in these classes in order to add functionality to each of these elements. Here is the thing, in order to understand what we are doing, I have separated each function into four different parts and will comment them. It's a good practice to divide your goal into sub-goals in order to achieve one sub-goal at a time to succeed in main goal in the most convenient way. I hope you understand what I am saying. So now we have four parts or sub-goal in this JavaScript. Close the navbar, toggle navbar, scroll to section, and then close navbar and finally close navbar on clicking anywhere outside the menu items. The close navbar function animates each li element upwards using translate y to minus 20 pixels. After a 500 ms delay, it hides the menu and overlay by removing the show class from ul and overlay, and swaps the toggle icon from close to bars. Remember the show class that we created in CSS to display elements for both overlay and UL separately? Well that's what we are removing here because we don't want to see menu items and overlay after the navbar is closed. We are also going to toggle icons of close and bars in JavaScript. We already have a bars icon as default but we will add close icon while also removing bars icon in this close navbar function. Now for the toggle navbar where we toggle the navbar open or closed, updating the icon and animating menu items when open. The toggle navbar function listens for a click on the nav toggle button. If the navbar is open that is UL has the show class, it calls the close navbar function to close it. Otherwise, it opens the navbar by adding the show class to UL and the overlay switches the icon from bars to close, and animates the list items by translating them downward based on their index. We are using very easy and simple JavaScript in order to understand it fully, so I hope this explanation of JavaScript is good enough. I am trying my best, but well I am not that great. It's a good thing that we can add CSS properties and values to the website using JavaScript. All we need to do is use style, and then the CSS property, Important to note, this translate Y is under single count not backticks. Well navbar is toggling meaning JavaScript is working, but this isn't right. Let's see the UL to find the problem. This top value of UL shall be in rem not pixels so please make sure to correct this mistake. Well this toggle function seems to be working so let's head on to our next part of scroll to the click section and only then close the navbar with some animation rather than closing it on click. This code listens for a click event on the hex navbar, and if a navigation link A is clicked, it prevents the default behavior and scrolls smoothly to the corresponding section of the page. After the scroll is completed, the close navbar function that we created earlier is triggered with a delay of 800 ms to close the navbar. If you guys are wondering why we are using capital A here rather than small then that's because in JavaScript, tag name returns the tag name of an element in uppercase by default, regardless of how the tag is written in HTML. So, even though anchor tags are written as A in HTML, the target tag name will return capital A. That's why the code checks for A in uppercase. Oops, laptop battery is low. Let's hope it doesn't shut down while I am recording. Otherwise I will have to restart the JavaScript all over again. I was too scared for the battery, so I plugged it in. Sorry for the delay. Anyways back to JavaScript code, now we have to create our last function for header navbar. When clicking the link, we want to go to the section and then close the navbar, but that rule is not what we want for clicking anywhere else. It needs to close right away without waiting to go anywhere, so we have to separate functions for closing navbar. For this one, we have event listener that checks if a user clicks outside the hex navbar or nav toggle elements. If the navbar is open that is the ul has the show class and the click is outside these elements, the close navbar function is triggered to close the navbar. This ensures the navbar is automatically hidden when the user clicks elsewhere on the page. Well everything is working except the icon that is not toggling so let's see the close navbar function. Apparently we forgot to remove the close icon here. Now that's better. 
Here is the thing we have our titles of sections on top of the section meaning they are hiding behind the header, but our navbar is still going to the section link clicked. I will show you guys that. The buttons are working as they should also the search bar as well as other animations and transitions here in this header. We will also see our finalized outcome of this header navigation navbar in different screen sizes as well, to test how responsive this whole thing is. This is the not much sped up version of this outcome demo, so you guys can see what's really going on. I think you guys have dealt with enough of my blabbering throughout this video, so I will shut up now and let you guys enjoy some moments of peace. I really love making AI bias over dude say the word blabbering, seems really funny. I will be completely silent now. If you have been dealing with my dead humor for 21 minutes straight then, 